Welcome to another JS drop from this dot. In this drop, Aiden Bai explores the performance implications of the virtual DOM in frameworks like React and presents an alternative approach called the Block Virtual DOM. Aiden delves into the origins of the virtual DOM, its purpose in addressing performance issues, the process of diffing and reconciliation, and more. Like and subscribe for more JavaScript content. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Aiden Bai. I'm the author and creator of Million.js, a fast virtual DOM replacement for React. Today, I'll be talking about the virtual DOM, but this time, back in block. A little over four years ago, Rich Harris released Virtual DOM is Pure Overhead. Rich most notably said, you've probably heard of the phrase, the virtual DOM is fast, often, mean, uh, often meaning that the real DOM or the virtual DOM is faster than the real DOM. It's a surprisingly resilient meme. In his article, Rich Harris argues that the virtual DOM, a widely praised feature of frameworks like React, is not as efficient as many developers believe. He goes on to critique the ways it works and presents Svelte. But what followed years after was the emergence of a new meme, that the virtual DOM is pure overhead. This meme became so resilient that it turned the no virtual DOM framework movement from iconoclastic subgroup to a fully fledged crusade. Thus, the virtual DOM was relegated to the annoying cousin nobody likes, but has to invite to family gathering status. It became a necessary evil, a performance task we had to pay for the convenience of declarative user interfaces. Until now. But first, you may, be, you may be asking, why is the virtual DOM so slow? Well, it's all because of this guy. Okay, maybe not this guy specifically or his amazing song, but this component. Let's take a look at the recall component. If math.random returns over 0 0.5, then it will have some, you know, unless you're AngularJS user interface. Else, it returns something else. Let's say we want to change the current UI, which is never going to give you up, to unless you're AngularJS. How would the virtual DOM approach this? Well, the virtual DOM uses something called diffing. Diffing is computation that compares different user interfaces. Let's say we want to make a user interface from old to new. Well, we check if the old text is the same as the new text. That's called a diff. And then we make the patch, which is the actual change to the, change to the real DOM. And this applies to many, many elements, right? It's not just you know, one node. Um, in this case, you're comparing old to new, old to new five times, and we have five diffs. You can observe that the virtual DOM is O of n time or linear time complexity. Basically, the bigger your user interface is, the more diffs it's gonna do. But what if there's only one change in your user interface? Well, you're still going to have to do five diffs because the diff is the comparison between user interfaces, not the actual patch. And you can see that this can get really bad, right? If we're only changing one thing, what happens if we have 200 elements on the page? Well, that's not good. Um, you know, you can see that it can get really, really nasty. So if we dig into how the virtual DOM implementation works, we can actually represent both of the user interfaces as a tree. Let's say our user interfaces are represented here. This is what we currently have and this is what we want. Basically, we're kind of swapping the two and five nodes and removing the three and four nodes. So how does the virtual DOM deal with this? Well, tree traversal. First, we compare if one and one are the same. In this case, they aren't the same. We go to the next node, two and five. Yes, two has been changed to five. Therefore, we make that patch or basically updating the real DOM. We go down the line, we can see three has been removed, we make a change, and so on. Through this process, the virtual DOM can make diffs with the trees and figure out what exactly needs to be changed. You can see that this can get really efficient, right? Because a lot of the nodes can be static. Not every node changes. As we saw in the previous examples, 
um, even if one node changes, we'll need to diff a bunch of unnecessary content. So the block virtual DOM introduces something a lot more straightforward. Instead of diffing every single node in the tree, we just identify what is dynamic and we skip this static, right? We don't need to do that work. And so um, library I work on, MillionJS, um, uses this architecture. Let's see, take a look how it works. Million uses a compiler. Basically, it can figure out the relationship between the state and the user interface. In this case, we represent the user interface as a tree. Um, we run the fun, if you have a, imagine a function component, we pass in the props as placeholders. Placeholders are special, um, is special data that the compiler can recognize as something that will be changed in the future. Imagine it as like a, like a promise, right? Um, but it's not a promise, but like we imagine as a promise, um, that promise will resolve to some state. Um, but once we've actually placed the placeholders inside the tree, we need to figure out where those specific nodes are. We check if the first node is a placeholder. In this case, it's not. Second node, no. But the third node is. In this case, we create an edit mapping. The edit mapping um, builds the relationship between the state and the user interface. In this case, it's the relationship between node one and this um, you know, placeholder node here. And we go down the line, we see another one, add it to the edit mapping, and we finish our compiling process. We send this all to the bundle and the bundle can analyze this later. So during the runtime, when we actually need to make a change to the user interface, instead of diffing by node of the tree, we're diffing by block. The block is basically a, a section of the tree we know um, will kind of stay static. It's something that we can optimize. In this case, we have the relationships between the state and the node of the user interface through our edit mapping. If we want to change the values of node one, one and node one, two to three and four, instead of checking and diffing the nodes, all we do is check the state. In this case, has node one changed? Yes. And so we make that patch the real DOM. And we do it again with node two. You can see that this also changed. You can see this required significantly less computation because again, we're not diffing by node, we're diffing by block. Um, so the performance is really good, um, at least for a million. Um, and I know for other uh, block virtual DOM implementations, they score very highly on the JS framework benchmark, which is the kind of well accepted standard for performance um, benchmarking in the JavaScript framework space. You can see that million performs roughly 70% better than React um, on the benchmark and roughly 30% better uh, than Preact. Um, but the benchmarks are cool, but I wanna see how fast it is. And so I've kind of prepared an example for you. The great thing about Million is that you don't need to deal with understanding how the block virtual DOM works or implementing it yourself. You can if you want, but um, in this case, Million actually provides a utility function. It's called block. By wrapping your component in this block function, you create a higher order component. It's this Rickroll block. Basically, you can use this Rickroll block in your code just like any React component. And so you get the power of the block virtual DOM that Million has, and you're able to use that inside React. And that's kind of the value proposition of Million. And with this example, you can see here, I prepared a demo. Um, this is kind of like, uh, you know, an arbitrary benchmark or like kind of a visual benchmark thing. Um, there are caveats I recommend looking into them. Um, but essentially, when I kind of quickly click the uh, React thing, you can see that there's a lot of frame drops and there's a lot of red, which means it's performing kind of badly. But with Million, it's pretty dang good. Oh, there we go. It's pretty dang good. So if you're interested in the block virtual DOM and the performance implications you can actually make with it, please check out million.dev. We're doing a lot of exciting work and experimental work about not only how do we make the virtual DOM faster, but how can we provide um, value to 
projects that use React, users that use React, that suffer from these performance um, performance issues, and how can we expand their capabilities in their app? Uh, but fundamentally, Million provides kind of a new way to view UI. It's no longer a trade-off between declarative declarative convenience of declarative UIs and performance, but rather you can get the best of both worlds with Million and the Block Virtual DOM. Thank you. Thank you.